video, we're going to demonstrate how we converted our blank staircase wall that kind of looked like this into a fully functioning and DIY brick and stone wood stove heart. Now again, this is a full do-it-yourself project and I'm really excited to take you guys along on the entire build and show you each step along the way as to how we did it. If it looks intimidating at any time, I can assure you if I did it, you can do it too. And it's just so nice to have this finally done and it turned out great. So if anything, if this project gives you some ideas to build a heart yourself, then I think that's a win in my book. So be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel by clicking down below and comment on the video and let's get into the build. So as you guys can probably see from those opening shots, this is a pretty unique hearth design with a brick box in the back and a landscaping stone sitting directly in front. starting to rain a little bit. So this stone is absolutely massive, you guys. So it doesn't look like it, but it's again, 67 inches wide by about 28 inches deep. And it weighs over 800 pounds. I believe it was 840 pounds when I bought it. it cost me about 270 bucks. So it's gonna be a nice piece. It's just trying to get this project done and figure out all the kinks. I spent a good chunk of time getting all my measurements ready and I won't go too far into the measurements just because every stone, every design is going to be a little bit different, but you guys get the point. Just make sure you have all your homework done. I wanted to tape out the entire design before I actually started building it so I could have a great idea of what it was actually going to come out looking like. I just laid out every brick to get an idea to make sure I had enough. Okay, so it's not quite perfect, not quite straight, but this is essentially how many bricks we'll be using and what the box will look like. Now we just have to construct it these ones on the end here, just, they'll be half bricks. So I think it couldn't have come out any more perfect. Once I had all my measurements taken, just went outside, cut up my two by eights, started the construction of the box for the bricks. Once I had the basic outline of the box together, I just wanted to make sure it was completely square before I moved any further. Now if possible, you guys, I would recommend to not build this on top of your vinyl flooring like I did. I'm not too worried about it, but they say as temperature varies, your vinyl flooring will expand and contract, but for this design, I decided to just build it right on top of it. Here I'm just adding some support members to the inside of the box. Once the wood stove's on, it'll be weighing right around 600 pounds. And so with that and the weight of the mortar and the brick and everything else in between, we definitely want to make sure that this platform is going to be strong enough to hold all that weight. Okay, so now that the basic construction of the box is built, uh, we're going to kind of switch gears here 
and we're actually going to go down into the crawl space and beef up the floor joists. So with the weight of the wood stove, the weight of the 840 pound rock, I'm estimating that we could have about 1,500 pounds sitting on top of the crawl space or the floor joists um, at any given time. And then, you know, if somebody was to sit on the platform as well, I mean, you could have almost a ton just sitting right here above the floor or above the crawl space. So I want to go down and beef up the floor joists before we go any further. So I've got um, this Tiger brand jack post uh, that I got from Home Depot. And basically, we're just going to set it up. It's super easy. It comes with about four pieces. You have this metal plate, I'm going to have it sitting on top of this concrete block. Metal plate goes on kind of like that. Uh, this tube goes on right here. And then another metal plate goes um, on top as well. And that'll kind of sit on my treated four by six that I'm going to be using. And then you can just adjust from the bottom here. And then you just put it across your floor joists and it should add a lot of support. So these things are rated to hold up to about 18,000 pounds. So uh, with one, I, I think we should be just fine to hold this. So I've already been down into the crawl space. We've got our place picked out as to where we're going to do this. I am going to have to dig out the crawl space a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll make it work. So let's go down and beef the crawl space and then we'll get to the fun stuff. See, not a lot of working room down here. From the floor to the joist, I have about 16 and a half inches uh, to make this work. Uh, to use my treated four by six as my support post, we've got to dig out about five and a half inches down here to place my concrete block. It'll make more sense as I go. But I already marked out my floor joist here, basically with an X. So we want to support this one. This one, leave the one back there too. So, we'll get to work, show you guys what this looks like here. All right, call me Stanley, god damn yell nets. Oh. We got a pretty good sized hole here, and it should fit our, our concrete block. So we'll throw that in next and get this thing done. Okay, so we're back down here. We've got our 52 and a quarter inch four by six cut. Should be plenty strong. We've got a concrete block. And we've got our jack post that we'll get all set up here. Okay, so now that the floor is all supported and done, um, now we've got to get the rock up against our platform. And so right here we've got just a, a small little rubber mat to protect the floors. And then I cut a 14 inch piece of treated four by six. And we're actually going to set the rock right here. But first we're going to just put a couple screws in to this so it doesn't move. Time to pick that stone up and try to get it inside the house. Okay, so the next plan we gotta lower this 840 pound rock on our Harbor Freight 1,000 pound capacity 
mover's dolly. This will be a real review here. Um, no guarantees what this is gonna be like, but uh, we're going to try to lower it down the best we can and then try to wheel it up our ramp and in the house. Full confidence, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Watch your... You do. Ten fingers. Okay. Can you back your tracker out? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, so kind of change of plans here. So our initial plan was to get it on our little moving cart and try to push it up the ramp. But we had a little change of plans and we're deciding to try and pick the rock up on the moving cart and then kind of move it over to the porch and uh, then we won't have to actually push it up the ramp. So um, we'll see if this works and we have no idea if it will. So wish us luck. Just test and I, we actually did pretty good. We got it on a roller dolly, then we got it on the porch, but we couldn't get it too much further after that. So we had to call in some reinforcements from work and get it done. So after we actually got the rock in the house, we got it on top of that 4x6 that was right in the middle of it, and then we just had to level it out. So what I actually ended up doing is I used a car jack and I ended up taking that 4x6 okay. out, yep. and then I just kind of let it gently down to the floor, got it leveled up with some blocks and some wedges, and went from there. Okay, Trey. We're so close. That's kind of what it looked like after it was all leveled out. Okay, so the rock or the stone is exactly where we want it. It's completely level and it's looking honestly better than I thought it would turn out. So I'm, I'm really thrilled and happy about that. Uh, the next step, the next thing that we have to do is we have to build up our box right behind it. And I kind of left that for later in this project because I, I honestly wasn't sure how tall the stone was going to be after we leveled it and got it in place. So I figured this was the easiest thing that I could manipulate. Now I can build up the box. Uh, I've got some two by sixes that I'm just going to use and then some half inch plywood and then we'll get to bricking it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get the box built up and I'll show you what that looks like. So when I went down to the hardware store uh, company that I buy my lumber from, typically I have no problem. Today I bought two 12 foot two by sixes and the kid that loaded them up gave me um, 10 footers. So I'm a little short on what I need here just by a little bit so I'm gonna have to get a little crafty. And of course I've already cut them up and there's, it's not worth my time to go down there and, and raise a stink. It's about a 30 minute drive. So. Um, yeah, we've got to get a little crafty with how we cut our wood now, um, just because we're a little short, we'll make it happen. You guys are wondering why I'm doing everything on my incredibly messy porch. Because we've got some 
beautiful Idaho <laughs> fall rain today. It is just dumping. It's just time to throw some screws in. So I estimated that I wanted just a little more height on the box. So I took a half inch sheet of plywood, cut it to size, put it right there on top of all the two by sixes. start the bricking process. So we've got to make a scratch coat before we lay the brick and so what we have here is some roofing paper. And what this does is it acts as a moisture barrier for our brick. So all we did was we cut it to size, staple it down, and we actually added two layers of this which is really important. Make sure if you want to do this, if you want to make a scratch coat for your brick, you add two layers of a moisture barrier. After a couple layers of roofing paper, your moisture barrier kind of looks like this. Now once you have your moisture barrier made, you got to take some metal lath to the platform. Now typically these come in 27 inch wide by 84 inch long sheets. You can buy them from your box stores for about 15 bucks a sheet. I had some left over from a previous project, which is why it's all cut up. I just cut it to length, cut each piece to size to match my platform, and screwed it down. Now what I have here is some self-piercing lath screws. They're one inch long, galvanized, and what they'll do is they'll hold the lath in place and will screw them down to the platform. I even got some nice help here at the end to help get the rest of the metal lath screwed down. Okay, so screws are all in. Can you guys tell who did where? <laughs> I didn't know you were going straight. No, there was like so much overlap you kind of had to do that. It's perfect. Okay, now we're going to kind of just fold these over the best we can. Might need some gloves. Those things are sharp and a little picky. Yeah, don't, don't cut yourself. It's my fault. Okay, so we have the side piece now of our expanded metal to go on, and we're going to go rough up, meaning if you kind of take your hand and you can feel it, it's pretty rough going that way, but it's smooth going down. That way when we take our mortar on our trowel, we'll wipe it up and it should catch right in the metal line. So we'll get it screwed down, I'll show you what it looks like. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, we're done. Okay, so we've got the, the metal lath completely surrounded on our box of where we're going to put mortar and brick it. And now it's actually time to make the whole scratch coat. So we'll take our mortar and, and our trowels and basically get after it. Uh, we are gonna put a piece of painter's tape kind of along the walls just to protect them where the brick won't be sitting. bag of type S mortar. Just professional grade mortar. Nothing too exciting about it. Okay, so we're finally ready to get to the scratch coat so we can uh, eventually get to laying our brick. Um, so we've got our bag of mortar. We've got our little hand shovel from when I was digging in the crawl space. And yeah, we're just gonna get some mortar in the bucket, mix it up, going for a kind of a, a thick pancake mix consistency with water. 
and yeah, and then we'll get inside and, and lay out the scratch coat, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Alright, we're going to start with that, add a little water. I like that consistency. Let's uh, let's try that and go inside. Try that first here. Here we just lay a little bit of the mortar on the metal lap. Just start making a nice thin coat with our trowels. Now, I'm no trowel master by any means, but if I can do it, I bet you you can too. People are probably gonna blast me for my trowel work. I did resort to the hand trowel method at one point. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> the... Okay, if it works, it works. So a typical trowel will have a smooth side and then a side with some small little metal teeth. Those small teeth are actually used to make the scratch coat. Let the mortar sit and harden here for about 30 minutes and then run it along the mortar and that will make the scratch coat. You'll see some fine little mortar ridges, if you will, and that's what the brick will adhere to once it's fully cured. Okay, so we made a lot of progress today. We've got the scratch coat completely done. Um, it just needs a couple days to cure now, and uh, that's what we're going to give it. So we'll be back here in a couple days, and we'll start doing the whole brick process. And this project's really coming together, and we're, we're really starting to be able to see what it's going to look like. In the end, I'm pretty excited. So hopefully by next week, we'll, we'll have it pretty much done. So we'll see you guys here in a couple days, and yeah, we'll get the bricks going. Okay, so the scratch coat's done. It's been a couple of days. It's cured, it's fully dried, and we've got a couple rough spots that just kind of dried a little bit thick. So we're just gonna take our trowel and kind of smooth it out, get rid of these bumps, and then we'll be completely ready to brick. just laying out the brick in a really rough layout pattern to get an idea of where we want each individual brick and how many we're actually going to need. Okay, so we have the brick all laid out and I wasn't planning on doing it tonight and I apologize if the lighting kind of gets a little worse from here on but tonight Tess and I were going to fully mud and get the brick placed completely. So that's the next step. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay so we're out here in the garage. We got our bag of mortar again and we just got to mix them up so we can start mudding the bricks. Let's get after it. So you want it so it just kind of barely slides off there. I think that'll be just fine. Ready? I think so. Are you ready? I think so. I think I can remember how to do it. I hope so. It's only been a year. That's true. Okay, so Tess is gonna help us get the brick all buttered up and mudded. And so what she's demonstrating right now is 
We like to spray down the mortar and spray down the brick because it seems like the mortar adheres better and you'll get a better bond in the end if you do that. So she's just gonna put on a nice thick layer and what we're trying to do is get it level to the top of this stone. Go make you more. Okay, yeah, you may have to. Mm. We have to do this much on each one. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. And you just have to push it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this row, we've got three bricks that we marked with green painter's tape. And for these, we're actually skipping them completely because when the wood stove gets installed, we're actually having a fresh air intake drilled through the mortar, through the box, and down into the crawl space. And so we're not quite sure where that's going to go, but um, the guys installing it asked that we would uh, leave a couple bricks out so they can actually get it just right. So that's what that's for. And then once the stove is actually installed, we'll mortar the bricks and finish that job up. Done? I think so. Good job. Thanks. Okay, so after a long night of laying brick, we finally have it done, and you're really starting to get an idea of what the finished product is gonna look like. So we got the top of the platform completely bricked. We've got the side done, and it's really coming together. So tonight, we've just gotta let it cure, and tomorrow we'll go back with more mortar and we'll, we'll grout in between each spacing between the brick. And pretty much that'll be the, the base of the project completely done and then we'll just go back with some finishing touches and finish it. So we'll see you guys all in the morning and we'll get the project underway. <clears throat> okay, so it's the next day. It's been about, I'll give or take 16 hours or so since we finished laying the brick. Now we have to grout in between each brick spacing. So we mixed up some more mortar and for this batch, I made it a little bit runnier and I'll show you why here. But basically we have a couple grout bags and basically what they are is they're, they're just like icing bags for, for cakes or baking or whatever. Um, small hole at the, at the end that the, the thin mortar mix needs to, to make it through. And then essentially we're just gonna spread it out throughout all the all the space, all the cracks in between the brick, and we'll go from there. I'll show you what it looks like. I have made such a mess, you guys. You know, the best thing is to not move it right now because it'll smear, so I gotta let it cure a little bit and hope that it just kinda rubs off and then I can wipe it off with a brush. Of course, it's on white brick, so. <sighs> this has definitely been, like, I was, I've been dreading doing this part because last time when we did this at our old house, just, it always makes a mess. Let it be a lesson to you. Mix your mortar 
in a different container than what you've been using. Don't make the mistake like I did, because if you get small rocks in it, then it won't squeeze out of your, of your grout bag, and then you squeeze harder, and it just blows it everywhere. And just making a huge mess. Uh, we'll get through it. We'll make it work. So after I struggled for just a few minutes, I was able to get my feet under me, and then we just really started making some progress with grouting in between each space. We got it all done, got it looking a lot better. Next, it's time to strike the joints. So striking the joints just means going in between each spacing after you've let it cure and dry for about 35, 45 minutes. And then you just take the end of a paintbrush, or any kind of brush for that matter, and you just start running it along each space. And then I just take this little edger tool, push it in, and just try to give it that classic brick spacing appearance. All right, so we just got the brick completely grouted in, um, and it's actually looking pretty good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So it's just been kind of a lot of um, going back and forth between striking the joints, brushing it, cleaning it up, waiting for it to cure for a few minutes, going back, doing the same thing, vacuuming, yada, yada, yada. Um, so we'll probably do that a couple more times throughout the night, but it's come out really good um you know and essentially we're ready for a wood stove just might not look like it yet so the next step is obviously we have to wait for the wood stove to get installed so the guy installing it can drill through one of these bricks for the fresh air intake to go down into the crawl space yeah we're ready for a wood stove i'm pretty excited about it so that'll be a week from today, November 11th, 2021. So we'll see you guys when that happens. Okay, so it's finally the day of the wood stove install and I couldn't be more excited about it. It's November 11th, 2021 and it's been about a week since we finished the brick and the grout and it came out pretty good, especially if you look at it from the, from the top down and uh, I'm pretty happy with the, the finished product. So uh, the company that we hired to install the wood stove should be here within the next hour or two. And the reason I wanted to have a company do it is one, 30 foot vaulted ceilings and two, I wanted it permitted. So if it ever came down to the time to sell this house, which I don't even want to think about since we just moved in, um, I want it to be permitted. So um, yeah, should be a good day. Uh, some of the next shots should be of the wood stove actually getting installed and it's going to be quite the day for it because here in North Idaho we just got our first snow this morning so um, yeah there's definitely going to be snow on the roof but they told me they can do it 24 7 365 and yeah I'm excited to get this done we'll show you guys the next shots of the wood stove getting installed
All right, you guys, so stove's installed. It's been a few days since, and I couldn't be more happy with how it came out. So here in North Idaho, yesterday we actually had a huge windstorm, lost power for about seven hours or so. It got super cold, and we had the stove, so we were able to stay warm, and couldn't have come at a better time. And I'm super, super happy with how it came out. So there are a few things left that we have to do, a couple finishing touches, if you will. And I won't bore you guys with those, but I am going to film it, throw it in at the end of the video if you want to see the complete finished product. But from the naked eye, this is how it's going to look. But essentially what we have to do left is we're going to kind of clean up the bottom under the stone a little bit. We have our blocks, our wedges that we use to level it. And my plan is to kind of encase it all in mortar and that will kind of give it a floating stone look. And that's kind of what we're going for to just kind of clean it up a little bit. Also under the stove here, um, we have some loose bricks still from when uh, the guys put the fresh air intake in. And so we just need to mortar those down, do a little more grout work. And really it's just using the same techniques, doing the same thing that we did earlier in the video. And basically it'll be done after that. So um, just one or two more days of work. It's not going to be a whole lot. And then we can kind of throw this project to the side and just enjoy the heat that the wood stove is going to put out for us all winter long. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos related to firewood, wood stoves, all that good stuff. And comment down below if you enjoyed the video. Super, super excited to have you guys along on Five Acre Homestead and not planning on stopping making videos. So definitely have more planned. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.